Hello friends, this video on statistics part 8 is brought to you by examclear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's understand the concept of graphical representation of data. See the whole purpose behind collecting this data is to understand this data, to analyze this data so that we can come up with some interpretation. Till now we have presented this data in the tabular form. Let us now add more flavor to it. Let's add some wow factor to this. Right? Let's represent this graphically. And we know that the comparison is best shown using the graph because not everybody is good in maths. I mean, some people are good in math, but some people are confused with maths. For example, these two now three numbers. If I asked you which one is bigger, you may have to spend some time and understand which is bigger, and then you will say, okay, it you took maybe some 10 seconds for you to understand which one is bigger. Only in the three numbers. If it is 100 numbers, it will take more time for you to understand which was the bigger number. But let's suppose I give you three uh, bars here. I ask you which is bigger. Just by looking at this, you can tell that the red is the bigger. But it is graphical. Right? You don't have to apply any brain. You don't have to check that 926 is more than 930 or 928 is less than 935. You don't have to apply any brain. Just by looking at the graph, anyone can say that. Even the person who is not literate, actually, the person who is not literate, he doesn't know maths, he can say that the red one is bigger. That is the power of graph. Anybody can read it. Because the whole purpose for our, us, the whole purpose of our exercise was to represent this data. So if we can represent this data in such a way that even a layman can read it, even the person who doesn't understand can math, who doesn't understand maths can understand the data, that would be too good. And that's why we will represent the whole data, we will try to represent the whole data in the graphical form. Right? So in this case, we will be studying bar graph. This is an example of bar graph. So we will tell you what is bar graph. Just be patient. Then histogram. This is an example of histogram. And we will also understand frequency polygon. This is a sample of frequency polygon. We'll tell you what all these are, but just understand that in this, the next few uh, hours, we'll be studying the concept of bar graph, histogram, and frequency polygon. And the reason why, why we are doing it because we want to represent this data in a more graphical form so that even a layman can understand this. Let's start with the bar graph. See, bar graph is a pictorial representation of data in which Usually the bars, you see the bar, the word is bar, right? So we use the bar of equal spacing, of uniform width. Typically we use uniform width and equal spacing, but that is not required. And that is used between them. And that is used on one axis. And again, the variable, that is the variable. And the value of this variable is depicted using y axis. That is nothing but the height of the bar. For example, let's take this data. Let's draw the graph first. Then we'll understand the definition once again. So we have this graph for the students born in the particular month. So in January, we have three students. February, four students are born. March, five. April, six. May, two. Similarly, in December, five students. And we, are, we want to represent this in the graph form. So what we do is, we'll see here the months of the birth. This is a variable right and this is a value so variable will typically put in x and value will put in y this is a typical scenario but this is not must so variable is months of birth will put in the x and the values if you see it range from 1 to maybe 7 so I put 1 to 7 here so in Jan how many is Students were born three. So I'll put a rectangle, rectangular bar of height three. Length can be anything. February, four students were born. So I'll put a bar of height almost four. Length, uh, width of this bar can be anything. Similarly, March, five students were born. So I'll create a bar of height five. Width can be anything. April, seven students were born. So I'll create a bar of 
with 7, it is a little more actually, it's almost 7, not a very correct graph, but yeah, we will create a bar of almost 7 uh, height. So, in this case, I will say this is my 7. Just to avoid confusion. Similarly, in the case of May, two students we have on, so I will create a bar of almost height 2 width anything. Similarly, June 1, so I will create a bar of height 1. July, there were three students born, so I will create a bar of height 3. August, one student was born, I will create a bar of height 1. September 2, bar of height 2. October again 2, bar of height 2. November 3, bar of height 3. December 5, bar of height 5. So this data I can represent using the bar graph. Right? So this is my variable, this is my value and this is the form of bar graph. The color, the width, the spacing, these can be anything. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter in case of bar graph. Just the height of this bar matters. Okay. So again, let me repeat the definition. Bar graph is a pictorial representation of data in which usually the bars of uniform width. Typically, we use uniform width, not required. And uh, with some spacing or we generally use equal spacing, but even that is not required. You see, spacing is not same here right, between these two bars. And these are created on one axis, typically on X, which depicts the variable. And the value of the variable is shown in the Y axis typically. And that is the, val the value of, of this variable is depicted using the height, height of the bar. So height of the bar depicts well. Okay. So if you see, if we have to tell which uh, month maximum students were born, it is a little difficult for me. I have to scan through the whole table, find which is the maximum value. But looking at the bar graph, I can easily tell this is the maximum value. April is the month where maximum students were born. Right? If I have to tell which month minimum students are born here, I have to scan this is the minimum value. Okay, this is one, this is one, this is the minimum value. But looking at the bar graph, I can say that these two months are the months where the minimum number of students were born. Okay, for any month, I can just tell for July, you can say that three students were born. Pretty easy. So if you see using bar graph, the data representation is all the more better. Right, you can represent data in a better way. Right? You can extract the information more faster, correct? The data is same, the representation is different. Let's take a few examples to understand this. So it says that a family with a monthly income of 20,000 rupees has planned the following expenditure as per mentioned below in various heads. Grocery, maybe 4,000, rent is 5,000, education for kids, 5,000, medicine, 2,000. Fuel 2000, entertainment 2 and miscellaneous 1000. Total they are expending 20,000 bucks per month. So we have to represent this data in a bar graph. So if you see here, what is variable? These are variable. What is value? These are my values. So let's create a bar graph. Variable on the x, values on the y. And the value, if you see, ranges from 1 to Five. So typically I'll create one to five. I can create six, seven also, but typically in that range I'll create. Okay. So I have my variable here on the x and my values on the y. So for grocery, the expenditure was four. So I'll create a bar of length almost four. This is not exactly four. The bar is not correct, but has to be of the length four. Rent is 5, so I'll create a bar of length or height 5. Similarly, education was also 5, so I create a bar of height 5. Medicine expenditure was 2, so I'll create a bar of height 2. Similarly, fuel was 2, I created a bar of height 2. Entertainment was 1, so I created a bar of height 1. And miscellaneous was 1, so I created a bar of height 1. So if you see, I'm using different colors here. So using this also, I can say that rent and education are the one which uh, is the ma which takes the major pi or the total expense. Similarly, the education, entertainment and miscellaneous are the one which is taking the lesser pi. Okay, so please note that the width of the bar is not important. This width is not important. The color is not important. I have taken same width, just 
so that it looks good but it doesn't matter for clarity purpose we generally take equal width and we may try to maintain equal cap but that is not important at all okay and if you see here in this case if you see one unit depicts 1000 if you see that is why expenditure is in thousand rupees one unit this is it's suppose five unit it is five thousand three unit this is two unit two thousand right each unit is one thousand that's how we represent the data because we cannot create or we should not create bar of length 1000 meter or 1000 centimeters it makes sense right so we just say or uh, typically if it is in lakhs you say 1 lakh is one unit so it, everything is in lakh 4 lakh 5 lakh we create units just to simplify okay please note these two are examples where we have non continuous distribution of data this is just a frequency it is actually ungrouped frequency data Right, there is no grouping as well. So now we'll see uh, how to represent the continuous classes, okay, graphically, where we have groupings. Here there was no grouping, so let's take some examples of uh, scenarios where we have grouping. Thank you. Visit our website examfear.com to watch more and more quality education videos. You can also attempt free online tests that are there in our website. You can also get access to tons of free study materials and you can also find free tutors and mentors in this website. Thanks a lot for watching.